After graduating from Navy boot camp in early 2013, I attended the introductory A school for aviation technician training. For this story, know that a bathroom isn't a bathroom, it's a head. That you live in barracks, not in apartments or dorms. You live in fear of surprise room inspections where you're not landlord and you're not RA can make you do push-ups if they find dust behind the refrigerator. Your roommate is your bunkmate. The neighbors which share your head are your headmates. Your last name, your first name, your rate, aka your job, is told an acronym, as there's no better way to encompass somebody's identity than in shorthand. Being an AT meant you tested better than an AE, both of whom are smarter than an AO, who'd only stay a month in A school before shoving out to handle actual bombs. Uh, but don't confuse the A in AT, AE, and AO with the A in A school. That A doesn't stand for anything. That A is just to mark a beginning. A platter of oysters sits beneath the sunburnt face of my bunkmate Rhodes. He keeps telling me between slurps how oysters are an aphrodisiac as I brush my leg against his. He grabs a lemon half and plucks out the seeds, grinding the pulp. Down the road a bit, he says, there's a cove that leads to the bay, good place to snorkel. I listen and nod, but I don't want to snorkel, despite having already paid $30 for snorkeling supplies which are sitting in the back of my car. What I want out of roads keeps me busy when I should sleep. Busy reading into the motion of our bunk bed, staring into the shifting shadows waiting for an invitation. I can better serve myself getting shit-faced to abandon him and go back to the Hilton Inland and day drink before going out to Pensacola's one gay bar. When any of us go off base, it's rare to be alone. Our petty officers encourage it for accountability, saying it's less likely for some embarrassing incident to happen when your shipmate is with you. Although, the only accountability that I've ever found here is making sure the bottles are empty by the end of the night. Think about it this way. You don't join the military because it's your first choice. You either have the kind of life you want to escape or are the type of person that needs constraints to even you out. Most of the new enlistees are fresh out of their parents' house. Then boot camp happens, and we're deprived of simple freedoms, cut off from society. We leave boot camp more wound up than ever. And when we're set loose, we've little in the way of inhibitions. And I am no exception. Joining the Navy, let me escape the Bible Belt and my pray the gay away parents. We can't drink in the barracks, so we have hotel parties, piling in as many bodies as possible. Because I'm still underage, I, living off the liquor of strangers is my go-to. Last weekend, I got Everclear from our headmate. I found a black Sharpie and wrote XXX across the label, taking shots from the bottle like I was some cartoon farmer. I sat alone with it after the party had died, pretending it's straight gasoline, staring into the night, listening to Bjork, taking deep drags from my southern cut cigarettes in the smoker pit outside our barracks. We finish eating and Rhodes insists on paying. He walks up to the bar and starts waving a $10 bill at the bartender who is rushing back and forth under neon signs. I wait outside in the salty humidity and start to smoke. My smoke blends in with the brutalist gray of the restaurant. A family walks toward the entrance, fanning the air I hold the door open for them. A man reaches out his hand to me and says, thank you for your service. I press my lips together in a smile and nod. Even in our civvies, we're easy to spot. Rhodes walks out and grabs my shoulder, leading me to the car. It's about a five minute drive away from the boardwalks, but it's so quiet. Besides the few sailboats in the bay, it's just me and Rhodes. He points to the 20-story condos eclipsing the left half of the sky, whose shadow encroaches over the shore. No one actually lives there, he assures me. They built those things so quick I wouldn't be surprised if a hurricane rolled through and it all just blew over. Rhodes is pulling out the snorkel bags, black fishnet sacks holding the red rubber fins and obviously the snorkels. I peel off my white tank top and take down my sweat shorts, revealing even shorter swim shorts. Shorts so short I keep checking if, to see if I've spilled out of them. The breeze, the sun, the blatant exhibition. I feel good. I look good. 
stretching and twisting my muscles like springs wound round me. I rub sunscreen down my abs, already slick with sweat. Rhodes watches me undress before stripping down himself, revealing even more sunstruck skin. I take the chance to press my hand against him, watching the color change from white to red again. He presses his palm onto my chest, then releases, comparing our flush. I shove off to the water as my feet begin to burn. The tide paints the shore at each turn. My skin matches the silky mud. I sit, legs stretched flat in front of me, sinking into it and shoveling handfuls onto my lap. I press the sand down my legs, covering the giant tattoo on my thigh, matting the hair and scraping the skin till I get to my toes and wiggle it into each crease. Rhodes puts the snorkels down and joins me, repeating the ritual till we're both buried, two torsos sticking out of the sand. He grabs my hand and buries it into his lap, and I can feel his heart beating blood into him. We stay like this for some time, silent, looking away from each other, letting the sand swallow us whole. One by one, my friends are scattered across the globe, ejected from my life. Rhodes is gone, just another ember in the flame of my love life. I stand at the end of my nine-month stay in Pensacola, in a room with a dozen other ATs reading our new orders. Mine is with helicopters, Black Hawks in Norfolk, Virginia. I get to go home for a couple of weeks before mo moving to Virginia. 10-hour drive back to Houston in my 2006 Nissan Altima with no AC that's packed to the brim with my shit. I'm alone in Alabama and Mississippi. I'm alone in Louisiana, too. I'm alone waiting for my religious parents to get the door. Stranger to here and to there. My memories hang like picture frames, dusted with longing. My mind is fogged with lust and liquor and loss.